Thank you, everybody, for joining, and uh, welcome back. Um, it's great to uh, to see everybody. We have a great crowd in front of us, but then also certainly uh, thank you to everybody for the thousands of people that are listening online. And uh, while we're waiting for our next guest, I just pulled one of my good friends, Ben Wilson. Hello. Uh, <laughs> how you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. How are Appreciate you? you uh, very well. I'm glad you could jump on air with us. Uh, we're waiting for Farzad, but uh, you're my guest at 2 o'clock today, 2 o'clock Pacific. But um, yeah. I appreciate you jumping here a few minutes early. Um, so Ben and I have known each other for many years. We actually, uh, he was with Intel uh, when I was with Greenway, and uh, we started, uh, we co-founded the Accountable Care Community Practice together and did, a, did. a lot of work around the country around Accountable Care. Mm -hmm. um, and now that you've, uh, you've shifted uh, to Citrix, yes. um, Senior Director for Health Strategy. That's right. Um, for Citrix, and then, uh, and also one of the, thank you very much for to be one of the sponsors of this show. I did thank you for the, uh, in the opening as well. We, but, um, uh, we feel privileged to be a sponsor of your first day here at Hims. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you, my friend. And so tell us a little bit about your new role uh, at Citrix. Well, uh, we are uh, building a healthcare practice at Citrix. We have uh, significant market share in terms of hospitals. You know, most hospitals use Citrix if they're a uh, Cerner customer or they're an Epic customer. They use our software to securely distribute data and, and applications. So we're a big part of how healthcare is delivered today, but we hadn't really focused on it as a company in terms of better serving our healthcare customers uh, in terms of how we better align with the EMR companies, how we work with Epic and Cerner to make sure our products always work and it's seamless in terms of workflow uh, for our customers. And we're bringing in experts like myself so that mm -hmm. we can speak the language, we can understand the needs of healthcare customers and, and not only in the US but around the world. So a lot of what I'm doing is exploring opportunities for us outside the US. I'm flying to, uh, to Norway and to Sweden next week and I'll be in the UK the following week. So, um, and I'm also looking at uh, new areas for us to go into. We've been very successful with hospitals, and, uh, but we're looking at working with, like you have with medical groups more mm -hmm. closely and helping them to uh, be successful in deploying applications. Sure, no, and you're one of the more strategic thinkers in our industry. I mean, many years ago when we founded the Accountable Care Community Practice together, you know, uh, you're under the Intel uh, umbrella at that time, mm -hmm. but it, it was your idea and, and you know, kind of what can we do to help these communities, you know, educate themselves on accountable care, where value-based medicine was going, how alternative payment models will certainly dictate the future of healthcare, and yes. it is. So we saw that in advance and we helped a lot of communities around the country, but now you're also in your new role, you've, uh, you know, and I guess we've co-founded the Mobile Health Consortium as well. So what's your, so what are some of your thoughts there around the Mobile Health Consortium? Well, similar to the Accountable Care Community Practice, you know, we believe that raising all boats is the best way to promote healthcare IT, and that if we're a leader in that, then we will get our fair share of the market. So that was the concept with Accountable Care Community Practice. That's yep. the same concept with a mobile health consortium, that if we can help our customers to better understand the best path to deploying mobile applications to adopting mobile devices and for the industry itself to collaborate and helping them to do that we're all going to we're all going to win all the players are going to do better and, and most and the users and the customers will be more satisfied with the products we deliver and and that's going to be good for all of us so that's the sort of thinking I'm bringing to this new role and and the sort of thinking we used at Intel uh, you know Intel and Citrix have some similarities that were sort of ubiquitous technologies within healthcare and so when we do raise all boats yeah. it it certainly helps us well and John Holomka the guest before you actually brought up some of his focuses and, and some of his best practices and what he educates people to pay attention to is mobile health and mobility and what that brings in healthcare. Embrace it, don't fight it. So what you're doing is, uh, is fantastic. Tell us about some of the partners who are engaged in the Mobile Health Consortium for my listeners. So the, the founders are Microsoft, uh, Intel, and Dell, and Citrix. And, uh, and then we're t talking to several other organizations now about being part of all this. So, uh, but those you know, are pretty strong partners. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that was uh, the core of what was the accountable care community of practice yep. as well. So, and we have a lot of some of the same personalities. We've worked together for a while and it makes us much more productive and collaborative. So, and uh, we have a good time together as well. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's always fun. You always learn and um, 
it's just a great opportunity to collaborate. So in your role though with Citrix now, tell mm -hmm. me like what are the two or three things that you, um, you're kind of seeing in the industry and that you're tackling from your new position? Well, uh, certainly uh, interoperability is a key issue. And Citrix has always played a, a large role in that, uh, in helping our customers to deploy applications, no matter what the operating system, or what the device, or what the platform. Citrix helps our industry partners, as well as our end user customers, like hospitals and so forth, to do that easily and slim, simply. Uh, for example, you know, mergers and acquisitions is huge. Consolidation is huge right now in healthcare uh, because of yeah. the Affordable Care Act and the changes in, uh, in, in reimbursement. So, uh, and with our applications, we can help to bring on a new, uh, bring on a new entity, a new organization, quickly and simply without the users losing any access to data and or mobile uh, mobile devices or what have you. So um, so we so we think that interoperability yep. is key. We played a large role in that. We want to continue to be involved with that and we see that as a big opportunity for everyone. Uh, you know and you know th there has been some tradition within healthcare IT where s certain large players are against interoperability, right. but I think everyone's getting on the same page and I think the government's going to step in either way. Yeah. So I, th I think it's just something that's going to happen. And well, uh, to that end, you saw, I mean, not if you've seen this, but this morning, Karen DeSalvo put out that the, the interoperability pledge and all these companies are flying to, right. uh, to make sure that they're on it. So there's even more effort than ever before, if that was possible. I'm pushing towards interoperability. A pledge is one thing, though, and, yeah. and a mandate is another. <laughs> That's right. We've seen a lot of pledges yeah, in our time. That's a very, very good point. <laughs> Wise man. Uh, so, in uh, terms of other trends that we think are key, certain, uh, certainly consumer engagement yeah. is, is a big one. Everyone knows that. It's not something that the industry has a lot of experience with. We're even trying to figure out what to call them. Are they people? Are they consumers? Are they patients? Uh, but, uh, you know, Citrix's role in that is key in that we're helping to deliver the applications to uh, consumers so that they can have the data to manage their health, to empower themselves, to be healthier consumers of healthcare. So, uh, so that's so that's key, and 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 we're uh, we're trying to push that as well, and that'll be part of the mobile health consortium yep. uh, focus. Uh, and then I would say the other trend is, of course, m uh, mobility. You know, mobile Good workers, point. mobile consumers, everybody wants to do everything on their phone like right. I'm holding up now um, <laughs> <laughs> for you radio listeners. Right. And, uh, and so we're, we're helping to drive that trend and to help people to use, get to whatever application they want to get to on their mobile phone easily and quickly. So yeah, so we think those are some of the key trends that are really driving things and of course, uh, you know, the uh, MACRA and all the new regulations sure. are, are going to play a big role. I think we're, you know, as we move from more of a uh, volume-based system to a value-based care system, uh, where it's not about vo volume and quantity, it's more about outcomes and, and accountability, uh, that will change the way that IT systems are used. And I think they'll be used better and, and there'll be more innovation uh, at, the, at the ground level because the, the government won't be telling providers what to use in terms of technology. They'll just say, we want you to get this done, and you figure out what technology it takes to get that done. And, and I think that's going to create all kinds of innovation, and we want to be all over that. Yep. No, that's, uh, that's fantastic. And you align very well with what John went through and some of his best practices. Um, certainly consumer engagement, uh, mobility, and we started off with interoperability. So, uh, And that's what this show is about for the next couple of hours. That's what we're trying to focus on, are pulling out key trends. No matter where you live in the country, this is just happening in Boston or L Atlanta or Miami or LA or San Francisco or Dallas or Chicago. This is happening all over the country. So And, um, and globally. Very, matter. very true. And yeah. that's actually what John kind of ended with was uh, his reach now globally. So, um, well, Ben, I appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Okay. Um, and uh, in, in closing, what, what are come, what are say two? What are a couple of best practices that you lend to people and say, hey, these are the ways you can navigate, or what are some of the best practices that you offer? Um, well, so one of the, one of the things we've been doing a lot with customers recently is uh, talking about the customer journey, and it's sort of a it's it's sort of a workshop that we do with them to help them to look at 
what are the key pain points in a workflow, and then understand what are the technologies that, to help solve those problems and help yep. them to prioritize. So we're seeing more of that sort of user-centric design uh, within, excellent. within excellent. providers, and, and we're tr trying to help to implement that. Uh, we're also seeing, uh, this is an obvious one, we're seeing a lot of people moving to the cloud. Uh, almost exclusively with all their applications. Yep. So uh, and so they want to completely virtualize uh, their electronic medical record. They want to. They don't want to own any servers. They want every everything to be off premise uh, because it'll be more secure. Because they can uh, dynamically change and modify workflows much more easily. So uh, so yeah. So I think those are the key two best practices we're seeing. And uh, so. Thanks a lot, Justin, for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Right, you got it, it, buddy. I think you're going to come back tomorrow and talk more about the Mobile Health Consortium. Yeah, so I look forward to that, my friend. All right, thanks. Have a great show. Ben Wilson, thank you right. very much. Bye-bye.